Hey guys, this is Eve from Jungle Blends and today I want to take you on another one of my journeys of soap making. So today I decided to try a design that I saw someone else do on YouTube. I don't remember her name anymore by heart, but I promised to link the video down below so you can just click on it and check for yourself, okay? So follow me, let's go make some soap. All right, here you can see that I had prepared my oils and also my colorants so this is the black one is uh, activated charcoal and the other ones are micas that i got from different providers i can link them also in the video down below if you're interested in knowing where i got all of them so here i just stick blend it quickly until i reach emulsion i usually don't blend until i reach trace because i like my batter to stay really really fluid it helps me with the designs um, and later on you know you can always you know, you can always wait if you want to have a, a thicker trace, but if you blend too much and you blend over the thickness that you want, then there's no going back. So that's why I choose to do this. And I usually eyeball my quantities. Some soap makers are very much more organized than I am and measure everything. Um, when they divide a batter, it's it's really not my style. I am, you know, the same in, in personal life as well. I just like to eyeball things, you know, improvise in the moment. So that's, that's what I had been doing here as well. So here I just make sure that I stick blend to incorporate the mica with the, with the batter. And this last pink is a new one I just got. So I'm very excited to see how it turns out. So I'm using sandalwood as my fragrance. Surprisingly, uh, a lot of women like this scent, including myself. I initially bought it because I wanted to make soap bars for men, but it turns out that more women are buying these bars <laughs> than, than men. So now th this is why I'm making this soap today. Actually, I want to make a more, you know, feminine looking bar with this scent so that, you know, women don't have to go to the men's section to actually get it. So here the trick to this uh, design that I was trying to copy is that you have to pour along the mold so it's very important that it touches the the wall of the mold you have to tilt your mold on one end and the trick afterwards is that you also have to turn around the mold and then do the same on the other side and you will have to keep alternating one side and the other side so here i did three color lines and then i turned my mold around so the first go is always the hardest here at first I tried to turn it you know to the side and, and tried pouring with my left hand but I quickly realized that that's not very practical and I'm not so good with my left hand so I decided to, to turn it completely around each time. It's kind of a hassle because this is a big mold it's a 7.5 pound mold so it's quite heavy and not so handy to, to move around but at the end I, I got the hang of it. So sorry about the angle, I know it's not the ideal angle to show you uh, the flow of the batter, but unfortunately my tripod didn't allow me to position the camera more um, over the mold. My soap studio is quite small, so I had, to do, I had to do it with what I got. But the more batter I pour in, the better you can see it. And at this point I'm kind of pouring randomly. I'm not, I don't really have a system to which color I pour first. I just go with the flow as usual. And I really enjoy making those types of, you know, swirls or I don't know if you can call it swirls, like pour technique. Cause they also, they always come out so, so cool. Like the designs are, very neat even if you don't get it perfectly it will come out very interesting and very nice
So for future videos, I thought that I would just do different designs so you can see them. But uh, if you have any suggestions or anything specific that you want to see in the future, you can just leave it in the comments below and I'll take it into account, of course, for the next ones. Now, little parentheses, I'm not a teacher by any way, you know, I'm not someone that... Uh, I'm not doing tutorials is what I want to say, <laughs> okay? I'm not, I'm not that good yet. I'm not to that point yet where I could say, okay, today I'm going to teach you this or that swirl. Um, the purpose of this video is simply to show you what I was in the mood of doing that particular day and I just decided to film it, um, you know, to show you, to show you what I'm doing simply like that. But I, I don't, I don't want you to, uh, to think that, you know, I'm, I'm making a tutorial or, or anything like that. I'm, just showing you what I like. All right, this is always the hardest part for me when you're getting towards the end, you know, and you have to like scrape out the rest of the batter. It kind of always messes with the design, but you know, then at the end it's okay. You can always do a quick swirl on top to hide the mess. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not very uh, elegant with the rest of the batter. So towards the end, you can also take away uh, whatever you put underneath to tilt it as it's okay now to pour straight into the mold. And at this point, the batter got thick enough that it wouldn't mix. This is the end result. Um, I wanted to show you how I did the swirl on top, but my battery gave up on me. Sorry. So anyways, um, I don't really care that it has soda ash on it. I don't know if you can see it, it has some soda ash on it. I want to pipe this thing now, so it doesn't really matter, you know. I don't even know why I swirled it, just out of habit, I guess. But I want to try piping this, uh, this top. Nothing fancy, just some you know, tiny little spikes just to see how it goes and make it look a little fancier. So why don't we do that now? So as you can see, I'm preparing my frosting here, my soap frosting, and it's not entirely ready. Although, yeah, almost. I guess we'll have to wait maybe another five minutes and then we'll put it in the bag. In the meantime, here is the frosting bag that I have. I mean the piping bag that I have and this is the tip that I want to use. So let's see how that turns out as this is only my second time, believe it or not. So while my frosting is getting ready, I'm cutting my loaf into bars because that way I'm not gonna mess up the cut <laughs> after I put the frosting. Um, so just to show you the bars, how they came out, I'm extremely happy with them. It is not as flawless as the tutorial that I saw, but it's still beautiful. I really like the color combination. So now we're gonna see what it looks like after, you know, the frosting is on. And that way we can hide that bit of soda ash we have on top. And if it's still a little bit visible, I can always steam them to make them shine. All right, guys, I started doing it. And as you can see, I am no tutorial material yet, at least not for piping. <laughs> but you know, you got to start somewhere. Alright guys, in conclusion, I would say I still have a lot of practicing to do. <laughs> this is what they look like. Some of them look okay and some of them look like 
I don't know, like a bird pooped on them. But that's okay, you know, practice makes the master. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. Do you prefer them with or without the piping? And, uh, and yeah, let me know what you think. And if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer as well. Uh, and I had some frosting left, so I attempted a very ugly cupcake. <laughs> it's a poop cake. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of this content, please give it a like and subscribe so that you get notified when the next video comes up. Thank you and see you soon in the next one. Bye.